morning and welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral on this, the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Uh, we invite the children of uh, primary school age to come forward into the front benches so they get a better view of what's happening on the sanctuary. At the request of parents, we screen the mass in the hall, so should your children get a bit restless, you're invited to take them through to the hall. And in these last few minutes, you're invited to enter into an expectant silence for what's about to take place uh, on the altar. Thank you.
Very warm welcome to you. Great to have you with us. Before we begin our celebration, we have a tradition of prayer partners. The way we do that is just by finding somebody near us that we don't know, ask their name, and commit ourselves to pray for that person during this Mass. So if you'd like to find a prayer partner just now, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Well, brothers and sisters, today we notice a great difference in this cathedral. And uh, we have this uh, beautiful cross before us, uh, a version of the cross of San Damiano, which featured so strongly in the life of St. Francis. And uh, later in the Mass, uh, the cross will be blessed and incensed. So we thank God for this uh, enhancement of our, of our worship and our own lives, our own spiritual lives as well. And uh, so let us put ourselves, as Christians, we, we, it, we rejoice to hail the cross as the banner, the flag, the sign of our salvation. And so we turn our hearts to the risen and glorified Lord and begin our Mass by asking for the, the mercy of the Father upon us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth is to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Jesus Christ, only because 
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job began to speak. Is not man's life on earth nothing more than pressed service? Is time no better than iron drudgery? Like the slave signed for the shade, or the workman with no turt but his wages? Months of delusion I have assigned to me. Nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Reason, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly, I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than a weaver's shuttle, my days have passed and vanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never again see joy. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this, in my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone so as to win as many as I could. For the weak, I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door and he, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere to the neighboring country towns so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went 
all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's a familiar hymn, uh, isn't there? Lift high the cross, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. There's another hymn, lift up the cross. And I, when I am lifted up, said Jesus, will draw all to myself all humanity, all creation, everyone and everything. Well, uh, brothers and sisters, we have lifted up the cross and lifted it high, not without some adventures and drama, I should say, uh, but still uh, it has happened. And suitably enough, it happened on the 2nd of February, the feast of the Lord's presentation that we had on Friday, the very day when our Lord was proclaimed by Simeon to be a sign of contradiction, and when Our Lady learned that a sword would pierce her own heart. So the mystery of the cross was first revealed on that day, and so it was a good day to raise up this beautiful cross. And in 10 days' time, it will be Ash Wednesday when we begin the Lenten fast and begin our journey with Jesus into the Paschal mystery of his death, resurrection, and ascension. So today is a good moment to bless this cross. The royal banners forward go. The cross shines forth in mystic glow. Now we will be working on the lighting so that it will shine forth all the more. But a great thanks is due. Uh, a, a thanks to all of you whose financial support has made this possible. Uh, to the team at the cathedral who did all the thinking and planning and guiding the project forward. Uh, and then thanks in an especial way to our architect, Dave Schumann, and to the artist, Martin Earl. Now, I haven't got great, I've got my uh, short range specs on, uh, but I think he's here, I hope he's here. Uh, and he will be uh, speaking um, at the end of the mass uh, to say something about the cross, if you wish to stay behind for that. Um, so thanks to Martin Earl in a special way, and he will want me to add his fellow workers, those Jim Blackstone and others. He's very strong. This was a, a team effort on the part of this group of artists. So great thanks to all of you. And uh, this, this raising of the cross, it completes the first phase of the renovation of our sanctuary, and there'll be uh, a second phase, please God, which will mean returning the, the tabernacle to uh, the center here and repositioning and redesigning the, the bishop's chair, and also uh, this lectern or ambo, and also the creation of what's called an ombre uh, for the holy oils. So so that they can be preserved with suitable honor. But today, it's the cross that we're focused on. And as I mentioned, this cross is a version of the famous San Damiano cross, as it's called, which hung in the 12th century, and early 13th century, in a tumble-down chapel 
outside Assisi. And the young Francis, who was at the beginning of his conversion, used to go and pray there. And one day, the Lord spoke to him from the cross and said, Francis, look at my house, which is falling down. Go and rebuild it. Now, at first, uh, Francis thought that Jesus was talking about the sorry state of the chapel. And he literally started, he went around and got stones and started work rebuilding the, the little church. But he came to realize that Jesus' words meant more. Jesus' house is the church, is the community of believers. And he saw that it was his mission to help rebuild it in his own day, which he did by his personal holiness, by his preaching, and by the great Franciscan movement which he began. Go and rebuild my house, which is falling down. So this is a cross which speaks. Now, don't expect to hear voices uh, in your head, but St. Paul talks about the word of the cross. This cross, with all its, its, its power and its details and its meaning, speaks more powerfully than many words. Uh, it will speak to us through our eyes when we look at it and pray before it. This cross is, as it were, a great visual, visible word, more powerful than words. It can speak to us one by one, can speak to us as couples and families, as a parish community. It can speak to us as a diocese because the cathedral is the mother church of the whole diocese and the diocese is the one holy Catholic and apostolic church planted in this place, the body of Christ here and now. And so this cross calls us, we could say, to be fellow builders with Christ and the saints, to co-build the house of God here, a house of prayer for all nations. It calls us to be fellow artists, we might say, with the Holy Spirit, helping shape something beautiful for God in our lives. Really, to put it in a sentence, uh, we have no excuse now not to be saints. Right, just like Francis. And I, when I am lifted up, will draw all to myself, says Jesus. Yes, all people, all things, all humanity, all creation. So, just to say three brief things. You might notice, I, I won't turn because I go away from the microphone then, but um, notice the first thing, uh, just the bottom of it, the foot of the cross, and the top of the cross. At the bottom is a skull, at the, at, and at the very top is a hand stretching through. This is the life-giving, powerful hand of God the Father. The cross takes us from a skull to the hand of the Father. Golgotha, the place of the crucifixion, means, as we know, the place of the skull. And the legend was that it was Adam's skull. It was the very place where Adam died and was buried. Our Lord was crucified precisely there. Our Lord shared the death of fallen Adam, and Adam is us, all of us, in our sinfulness, in our mortality. And Jesus, through his death, resurrection, 
and ascension is through the cross sweeping us up in himself, carrying us back to the Father. And in response to Jesus' sacrifice, to his offering of himself, the Father extends his hand, his power, uh, uh, and to lift up Jesus to his right hand. And just as we are all one in Adam, so now we are all one in Christ. And so we are lifted up to the Father. O uh, crux ave spes unica, hail O cross, our only hope. The lifting up of Jesus is the lifting up of ourselves. So when we come to this cathedral, we may be down, we may feel down, we may have things weighing down, weighing on us, we may be feeling our fragility, our mortality, our sinfulness, but this cross is here to sweep us up and the hand of the Father is extended to us. And there's another thing. Now, notice how wide open Jesus' eyes are. They are not the eyes of someone dying. Notice, too, that there are no nails in his hands and feet, but the wounds are open and running, and the blood and the water are already flowing from his side onto Mary and John on his right. And above our Lord's head and the halo, the great halo, there is the roundel where we see Jesus ascending. So this cross is really, it contains the whole of Jesus's Paschal mystery. It's Good Friday, Easter Sunday and the Ascension all in one. And uh, the artist has added the two terminals at the end of the two arms. And as you see, the one on our left is of the birth of Jesus, his nativity. And uh, the, the one on the right is the angel speaking to the women at the empty tomb. So we have the birth of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. We have the whole liturgical year here. We have the whole of our faith. And it's almost, we talk about Jesus being taken down from the cross, uh, but in a way this is Jesus being taken up from the cross. And this again is a sign of encouragement. This is, this is Christ's victory. This is Christ overcoming sin, suffering, and death. He is far more than a victim. Many crucifixes he is shown simply as a victim, as someone suffering. But there is far more here. He is more than a victim. He is a victor. And so the whole of what we celebrate in the liturgy, and especially at Easter, the whole of our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ is concentrated here. This is the whole of our faith. And St. John, this is a, a, a crucifix very informed by the thinking of the Apostle John, that the, our faith, says St. John, is our victory over the world. So here is hope when we are down. Here is faith when we feel oppressed. Here is faith to give us victory. And lastly, there are the figures under the outstretched arms of the Lord. John and Mary on one side, and on the other, three figures, Mary Magdalene, Mary the wife of Clopas on the other, and a man, uh, the only one without a halo, you may notice. 
There are more women than men in this crucifix, by the way, if that might cheer up some of the congregation. Uh, but, uh, the, and Lon, that is the, the person we call Longinus. This is the centurion, the soldier. And he is, we might say, he is on the way to faith. He is on the way to faith, that man. And he is recognized by tradition as a saint. He did, he said, truly this man was the son of God when he saw Jesus die. And he came to see who Jesus was. So he stands for us. He stands for all the people we would love to be drawn to this church, drawn to our faith, who would come and look on Jesus and have their eyes opened as to who he is. But there's one other little detail, and I will stop, but one other little detail is if you notice those figures, Mary and John, who are they looking at? They are looking at each other. We know why, because Jesus has said, behold your son, behold your mother. And so they are looking at each other. And the two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, are also looking at each other because under the cross, through the grace of Christ, friendships are formed, a community is formed. The church is born from the blood and the water that flow from the side of Christ. That is what we say. So this cross is a word, it is a word that calls us to hope, it's a word that calls us to faith, and it is a word that calls us to love one another. And so, as Jesus is lifted up, we are drawn to him with each other. We are drawn to one another. We can bring all creation to him <coughs> and through him back to the Father. So now, let us bless it so that, so that the full potential, like, let us say, of this cross may be released into our lives, so that this cross may be a blessing for all of us, for this church, for this parish, and for the whole diocese, that we may feel the power of the one who laid down his life for us and was raised up by his Father. Blessed are you, Lord God, Father all-holy, for your boundless love. The tree, once the source of shame and death for humankind, has become the cross of our redemption and life. When his hour had come to return to you in glory, the Lord Jesus, our King, our Priest, and our Teacher, freely mounted the scaffold of the cross and made it his royal throne, his altar of sacrifice, his pulpit of truth. On the cross, lifted above the earth, he triumphed over our age-old enemy. Cloaked in his own blood, he drew all things to himself. On the cross, he opened out his arms and offered you his life, the sacrifice of the new law that gives to the sacraments their saving power. On the cross, he proved what he had prophesied. The grain of wheat must die to bring forth an abundant harvest. Father, we honor this cross as the sign of <coughs> our redemption. May we reap the harvest of salvation planted in pain by Christ Jesus. 
May our sins be nailed to his cross, the power of life released, pride conquered, and weakness turned to strength. May the cross be our comfort in trouble, our refuge in the face of danger, our safeguard on life's journey until you welcome us to our heavenly home through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we will omit the creed and continue with the prayers of the faithful. The Father sends his Son to heal us. We are confident that he can heal the whole person, body and soul, by the power of his cross. So we pray to our gentle Father through his Son. For all who are called to preach the gospel, whether from the pulpit or from within the area of their daily living, that they may do so with authenticity, integrity, and compassion. Lord, hear us. For the nations and peoples afflicted by war in our time, that the world may be raised up beyond violence, pride, and hatred. Lord, hear us. For all attracted to the Alpha Course, that those searching for God may find him in the fullness of Christ and his Church. Lord, hear us. For all who work in the healing professions, that nurses, doctors, researchers, carers, and support staff may always remember and uphold the God-given dignity of those whom they serve. Lord, hear us. For all who are sick, and in particular, Jackie Kilker, Yvonne Brand, Freddie Cummings, Tony Davidson, Bill Lation, David Adams, Jairo Solano, Rosalie Norvin, James O'Hara, Lucinda Morris, Pauline Marsh, Barbara Mearns, Marie Lago, and all who suffer poor mental health, that they may know the love of God made visible in outstretched hands of comfort, companionship, and healing. Lord, hear us. For all who've died, especially Maria Rangel and Aubrey Riley, both being buried this week, that they may find everlasting peace in the presence of him whom neither temple nor tomb could confine. <coughs> Lord, hear us. For all our personal intentions and those of our prayer partners, we pray for a moment in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, 
we bring our intercessions to you through your healing Son, who on the cross bore our sickness and endured our suffering, and by his resurrection leads us to glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We are going to have our offertory collection just now. It's your opportunity to support the mission of the church. Uh, and we do hope you'll be able to do that. If you're a UK taxpayer, if you could use the white envelope at the end of your bench and fill that in, it helps us to claim and gift aid uh, if you seal it as well. We're going to have a second collection today for the building fund. Uh, so as you know, there's lots of work to be done around here. The building fund itself is to keep this place wind and watertight uh, to do the small renovations. We'll be doing a separate a fundraising event for the rest of the church, which we'll speak about afterwards. But uh, whatever you can give for the mission is really very much appreciated. Thank you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. <clears throat> and so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, 
all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Hugh our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God, God, Almighty Father, Father in, in the unity, unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be sent under my will. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let the temple walk for his mercy. 
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to be seated, we're going to have our second collection for the building fund. So if you wish to, if you, again, if you're a UK taxpayer and wish to give for this, if you could put what you're going to give into the white envelopes and fill it in, that's really helpful for us. This doesn't include the work that we're doing for the sanctuary, as, as, <clears throat> as has been mentioned beforehand, the crucifix is the first phase in the renovation of the, uh, the reordering of the sanctuary. And so that's a separate fund which we'll be fundraising for. If you want to, to give towards that, go head towards the, the parish website and you'll see uh, some links there that you can uh, give. And I think, is, is there a GoFundMe page as well? Is that, is that going? Uh, Deacon Tony also has a GoFundMe page. We get the money. To di well, no, the direct banking is always good. If you, if you wish to give through our direct banking, maybe you haven't got cash and you wish to do that, we have a, 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 a cash a, a, um, contactless machine there at the back of the church and just put Sanctuary Project. Okay, other things that are happening. Next week, another second collection. My apologies. We tried to keep them separate, but we couldn't do this time. Uh, so there's a second collection for the Scottish Catholic Education Service. That's the... Uh, the, the service that supports our Catholic teachers who support our children, who teach our children the Catholic faith. And so, for the sake of children, we need to support the Catholic Education Service. So please do remember to bring something next week to support that. Uh, the marriage course continues tonight, uh, so if you're interested in that, for married couples, uh, go, go ahead over to the web website, you'll find that there as well. Next week, Saturday, we have our next uh, mission day, so we're having a, a whole week of mission in April, and so the mission team are coming at various times during the year. They'll be here next week, Saturday. Bishop Hugh, during his homily, mentioned about listening for the voice of the Lord. The first session on Saturday will be about how can we identify the voice of God speaking to us. How do we do that? What's that voice sound like? What are we to look for in hearing God's voice? So I, I think we all want to hear God's voice, and they'll be helping us uh, to learn how to do that. Also, also, so that's that. Good. Um, after Mass, just so the bishop's already mentioned, uh, we are, the artist, uh, uh, Martin Earl, is going to speak about the, the crucifix and talk a little bit about it. So we'll process back into the church, back in the sacristy, and then come out afterwards. So that those of you who have to go somewhere can do that. If you, if you're, if you don't want to hear about that, you can always... Go and you're invited to go into the hall for a cup of tea and coffee, or you can go for a cup of tea and coffee after you've heard about the, the hall. But uh, so if, if you want to have a chat, that'll be the place to do it after Mass. Uh, so, Deacon Tony, can I get your microphone, please? So, coming up, we've, we've started uh, recently, as you know, we've started Alpha. And uh, we have, oh yes, just before that, uh, Deacon Tony and Cowan and uh, Eileen has have uh, made some cards with the, the crucifix. So if you want to have by cards, I think they're £1.50, there'll be a sale in the bookshop and hopefully the bookshop is open today. Uh, yes, so we've, we started Alpha and Alpha is our tool for evangelization where we're trying to encourage people perhaps who are thinking about faith, who are investigating faith, maybe they're Catholics already or Christians already and want to grow deeper, then it's an opportunity to do that. And so I just want to call a couple of people out to speak about that. I think Farron, is she here? <coughs> Farron, fantastic. But I also saw Adana and Marion. I spoke to them last week. Do you guys want to quickly come out as well? Great. So we'll just be brief. Come, come, come. They, they're good. young people going to give their experience. They've all done Alpha recently. They're all at the last Alpha. So just have a stand here if you could. One, two, one, two. Is that working? Good. Come, come, come. Welcome, welcome. This is Ferrin. Ferrin, say hello to everyone. Everyone say hello to Ferrin. This is Marion. Everyone say hello to Marion. And this is Adana. Fantastic. Say hello to Adana. It's okay. Wonderful. Okay. So, very quick question. First question is, why did you do Alpha? Um, I did Alpha because um, that was one of the very first things I was told to do ever since I came here. And also because I've heard a lot about Alpha from the Alpha graduates. 
as I'd like to call them, like how it helped them grow deeper in their faith, even though like they were like Catholics before, and it helped them like answer the very simple questions of faith that are often overlooked. Fantastic, thank you, Farron. Marion, why did you do Alpha? Um, I did Alpha because I heard it would, um, and we was learning more about the faith, and I wanted to do it with my friend Adana. Oh. Yeah, so we could learn more about the faith. Fantastic, thank you, Marion. Adana, why did you do Alpha? Well, I'm not actually a Catholic yet, um, and I saw the notice at the back, and I was thinking it would be good to do with Marion, so we signed up. Fantastic, wonderful, thanks, Adana. And how was the course? It was good. Um, it was something I found myself looking forward to every week, um, speaking with some new friends, and it was good to meet people as well. Fantastic. Marion, how was it for you? I loved it. I loved it so much. I liked the food. The food was good. <laughs> and um, I like speaking to different people um, from the parish and people that I've never like spoken to before, and a wide range of age groups. So it was nice. Thank you. What about yourself, Marion? Um, for me, the one uh, that I liked the most about Alpha was the small group discussions because that was a time uh, where I could hear uh, different people's point of view about the faith and also put forward my own point of view, which was um, really interesting for me. Yeah. Fantastic. And so what difference has it made in your life? Um, it has made um, a good difference in my life. For uh, one, um, I've learned that you know, prayer need not be a really long, like elaborate, um, list of things. It can be like really small thing, like just by making the sign of the cross, that's your prayer. Or if you like to pray in nature, that's also possible. If you don't get the time, you can pray in a bus, pray in your park, anything. Fantastic. Thank you, Farron. What was your, uh, how has it changed? How's, how's your life changed because of it? Has your life changed with? Uh, well, no, well, I wouldn't say no. Um, <laughs> No, I left exactly the same as I came. <laughs> um, I made new friends. I made new friends in the faith, and it was good, and I like that, and there are people that I'll still speak to today. Fantastic. Adana, what difference has it made to you? Um, like Marion said, meeting new people. Um, I've met up with some of them again after, and I think that's the main thing for me. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Guys, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Like to thank, thanks, guys. God bless. If you'd like to come along, uh, please do sign up online so that we know you're coming. If you've got somebody you think might benefit from going along, uh, encourage them, accompany them, however it might take. We've got a number of other people that we could have asked who have also done the last course and really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, have a look at that. Thank you very much for your time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be, be God. to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix. Speciosa, 
Martin, please, to come forward, and if you could leave those who are leaving, please leave quietly. Thank you. And those who would like to listen to some explanation about the cross, if you come forward, you'll get a better view. And um, Martin hasn't got a very loud voice. those who want to chat, please to do so with coffee and tea in the hall. And those in the church, please remain quiet. Thank you.
Once again, those who are leaving the church, please do so quietly. And those wanting to hear from Martin, please come forward. Wait a bit longer. <laughs> so I, I'm going to begin now, uh, and I hope my phone is going to behave itself. I might have to fiddle with it a bit to get my notes. And more people are coming. <laughs> <laughs> 